What's up, everybody? I'm The Hook. And I'm The Blade. And together, well, you know. <laughs> Welcome to The Hook Blade Infinity, a regularly updating <laughs> live audio service and content delivery platform bringing capital C content directly to your ears every single... Actually, uh, come to think of it, that joke would probably be funnier if the show wasn't still canceled, which it is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, Hookblade was a show about all things Assassin's Creed. Now it's like the opposite of a live service. It's it's a dead service. <laughs> the, it's, it's the antithesis of a live service. <laughs> it's an unlive service. The standard Pokemon Hookblade. Tim, how you doing, man? I'm all right. How are you? You're all right. <laughs> I am feeling, some would say, infinitely worse than I was before. <laughs> um, but I do have a couple notes at the top of the motherfucking show, baby. Your favorite thing. Yeah, so you might be wondering what this is. Because we did cancel the show in the last episode. Um, it is still canceled. We're not coming back regularly. But we did kind of just want to talk about <laughs> this Assassin's Creed Infinity bullshit. Um, and we also wanted to talk a bit about the actual situation at Ubisoft as far as the allegations go. Not that we haven't talked about it before, but we kind of haven't really drilled into it. Because this is supposed to be more of a, you know lighthearted show than to talk about a serious issue, but it feels like the appropriate time in the context, especially of this new game that they've announced. There are some things that we'd like to say about it before all is said and done. So we're going to start by talking about uh, what Assassin's Creed Infinity supposedly is, and then we're going to talk about some of the people involved in it and what the word on the street is with those uh, scumbags. Yeah, so so we got our first glimpse at the future of Assassin's Creed recently, Tim. Uh, tell me tell me a little bit about what is supposed to happen with the next Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, so um, in the like kind of the original like I get like Bloomberg leak, I guess you could say, which is a little bit more. Um, um, it's not shy with 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 details as Ubisoft yeah. was with with their article. So in, in terms of the Bloomberg article, it's suggesting that it's going to be like this live service that is updated regularly. And in the follow up tweets that Jason Schreier put out um, regarding it, you know, he was specifying that it's a few years out and that both Montreal and Quebec were merging on this project and that Quebec is kind of taking lead of the series. Um, that is confirmed within the Ubisoft article uh, that they posted themselves. Right. But the thing that they had left out is the whole live service stuff. But that's probably true. Correct. Like, yeah. So a real quick note about that that I wanted to talk about, because I wanted to, like, you know, sort of pose the question at some point, like, why do we think Ubisoft made this press release? It's a little bit unlike Ubisoft to outright confirm leaks this way this is kind of i mean they've done this before but this is a surprising move is it not yeah i mean i want to say this is the first time they've ever done it because when like the victory screenshots came out they, they didn't follow that up with like hey guys welcome to assassin's creed victory you know what i mean yeah i mean even confirming the code name like that felt yeah, more definitely. more transparent than i would expect and here's my theory for the exact reason why this happened I think it has everything to do with the term live service. I think once that Bloomberg leak went out, Ubisoft correctly knew that no matter what the content of the actual leak was, they, they could have told us every detail under the sun about it down to the hair color of the protagonist. And all people would have cared about is the, ter is the phrase live service. So Ubisoft, I think, wanted to control the narrative a little bit by focusing their own press release 
which will immediately have a bit more clout given that it's from Ubisoft and it's official, it's confirmed, there's no speculation. They can say, well, here's what we actually want you to focus on. We want you to focus on how coherent and focused our vision for the brand is going to be because we have a plan now. There's an executive producer. Everything is going to be so nice and so prepared. Uh, We are just going to be choo-choo train spoon feeding Assassin's Creed content directly into your little mouth holes and it's going to be delightful. Uh, That's what I feel like they want us to think. They don't want us to think we're going to be nickeled and dimed for microtransactions in a live service clusterfuck extravaganza. Do you think do you think that the Bloomberg article's usage of live service is perhaps a little too uh the it's on it's on tip of my tongue. A little too um damn it. God damn it. <laughs> uh a, a little too I I I guess um God damn it. What am I, <laughs> it is literally on the tip of my dick. Someone help him out. Someone help him out. <laughs> a little too. Uh, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to start a new sentence. <laughs> Do you think that the usage of live service is not exactly how it is going to be? Do you think it's going to be a little bit but maybe more linear than that article lets on, or do you think it's it's going to be a live service and they just don't want you to know it yet? Well, I think that it's going to be a live service in the sense that Ubisoft making this project and dumping the amount of resources into it that they are only makes sense if they believe they can monetize and exploit this game significantly more so than they have past titles. So I definitely think it is going to be a live service in a significant way. But... There certainly is, with that term, a worst case and a best case scenario, right? So, like, and in fact, there are even things that could totally surprise us. Like, what if this is a primarily multiplayer title? You know, that would be... Because because every single example that's listed of live services that this game could even be competing with are fundamentally online multiplayer experiences, Fortnite, GTA V. Obviously, GTA V has a single player. Maybe that will be the case for Infinity as well. But you're not as likely to spend money on microtransactions in single player as you are in multiplayer. They've definitely earned their keep as far as like people have been spending money on the single player microtransactions. But I think making this game is a sign of their belief that a change like that you know, making a a strong multiplayer component, let's say, will allow them to make even more money because it would. I mean, psychologically, that just makes sense. We are going to spend the money on the outfit if we think other people will see us in the outfit. And that's how with like gun skins and CSGO or fucking Fortnite skins become viable is because they become status symbols in the game's economy, right? Right, yeah. All that is intuitive. All that makes sense. So worst case scenario, I guess, is that Assassin's Creed Infinity is some sort of horrendous battle royale online <laughs> garbagey bullshit. I mean, it it would be appealing to think that like, oh, they could just make, you know, the old school multiplayer into an online free to play fun times. But that would not be the thing they're doing by literally grafting Montreal and Quebec together and and putting all of their resources towards it. That game isn't going to be that game. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say that this is, it's, I, I, I would, I think it's going to have both. I think it's going to have a multiplayer function. Yeah. Um, and a single player function that may not be lovely, but <laughs> it'll exist. Like, this is the time for multiplayer to come back to the series. Yeah. Uh, through this kind of a title that, like, and... Uh, you know, and in the Bloomberg article, you know, they compared it to things like GTA five online or just GTA online. That's is, is what they call it. And yeah. so that is still being updated with things to this day and people are still buying it and people are still playing it. So if they can have that and also continuously like update with single player experiences, then I guess in their mind, they are keeping the best of both worlds. But that's also not what that is. But. Unfortunately, I think that the problem they're going to run into is because I'm expecting a multiplayer component while there would probably be something like the classic multiplayer, there also has to just be some sort of open, persistent world, free roam 
thing for it to work the way. Maybe say, it's GTA, like Fallout seventy six. Maybe. <laughs> Ugh. Hope not. I mean that that that's kind of a that's a, honestly probably a decent comparison to like a a, a classically single player game yeah. that shoved in an online function. Yeah. So maybe there's something like that. Like perhaps every year you get a new setting and you can go parkour with your friends around in it and do missions and stuff. Like uh, I'm. It could be kind of like parkour from Unity, but instead of like only four people, perhaps they could do like up to ten or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think the issue that we're gonna run into with this is that the core gameplay verbs of Assassin's Creed, to whatever extent there are any anymore, as far as you know, the last few games have gone. They. Don't, in my experience, from what I've seen, tend to apply well in a multiplayer context. Like the things you want to do, you know, let's say fighting in combat, you know, I is that experience, is combat significantly enhanced by having a friend doing it with you? I don't know. Parkouring is fun with friends in Unity. Lord knows that back in the Unity launch window, we and our friends spent hours just dicking around in Paris on on voice chat. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. And it can be fun, you know, if modernized. But is it going to keep people for a whole game? No. The novelty will wear off pretty quickly with something like that. And so what comes to be the, like, actual... The actual concern for me with live service Assassin's Creed, beyond the already just pants shitting inducing factor of the phrase live service, right, is, okay, for the last three games, what's been the big boogeyman that we've all blamed our problems on? RPG mechanics, right? Right. And everyone knows the RPG mechanics are there to incentivize microtransactions. So the question becomes, in order to incentivize a live service gameplay loop, something that will deliberately keep people invested in playing and coming back over and over and over again for years and years at a time. What is going to be the the sacrifice and the change that they make to the gameplay in order to actually accomplish that? Like does stealth disappear completely? You know, is parkour still gone? Like how much of the Assassin's Creed experience has to be compromised even further than it already has in order to have a viable live service product? I don't know the answer to that question, but I suspect it's going to be bad. I just don't know what this what, what, what Assassin's Creed Infinity looks like if it doesn't have some kind of multiplayer function to it. Like I, I agree. So I'd have to think that because uh, I've played GTA Online quite a bit, you know, back in the day when it had first come out. And like the single player and multiplayer experiences were so separate. Like I never... Yeah really was choosing one over the other when I was done with the single player of GTA five, I would just do on, I would just do online. And so how they're going to make that a cohesive experience. I don't know. Perhaps the answer is they don't make it a cohesive experience, but yeah, if you consider RPG mechanics and that's got to play in if they're, if they're sticking around, which it seems like they are, that's going to have to play into um, the multiplayer function. Like, you know, leveling up with your friends, getting gear with your friends. Like that's got to be a part of it. So Perhaps you have more experience with this. Like I've never, I haven't quite played games. Like I guess they, I guess I'm kind of teetering on describing an MMO, mm -hmm. but like games that are focused on like leveling and gear and whatnot, but also have that cooperative element. Like I feel like that's majority of MMOs. Have you yeah. ever played any MMOs? I have played some MMOs, not in a while, but the thing with MMOs that's very um, apparent is they'll be simplified to one or two really like core mechanics, whether it's shooting or some sort of turn-based combat. And then almost every gameplay interaction you have will be built around that one thing. And, <clears throat> you know, there'll be an element of teamwork that's encouraged and, and, and fostered this past trilogy too. That's what I felt like was happening. Like the verbs with which the ways in which you interact with the game became very simple building blocks, f simple gameplay pillars, for the sake of generating the massive amounts of content that they wanted in these games. So like if you create origins and you want to have a map the size of Egypt and it be full of forts and missions to do, that's much easier when the only ways you can interact with anything in the world are stealth and combat, you know, when you don't have to design areas for the sake of fluid or crafted parkour routes, for instance, that is a layer of complexity that they remove for the sake of, creating more content, right? 
And right. in MMOs, that's certainly necessary because the the world needs to be scalable. The 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 way that I, I'm rambling at this point, but I think you catch my drift. Um, right. I think what's most likely is that there will be some means by which Assassin's Creed Infinity. I think it'll start with a game that has a single player campaign. I think the first, you know, the the Assassin's Creed Infinity that launches will have a world, a setting, and a single player campaign within that, and also a multiplayer mode that is somewhat open world, with the possibility that the single player campaign has multiplayer missions or missions that other players can drop into. Does Fallout seventy six does Fallout seventy six have any kind of single player mode? No. Fallout 76 at launch didn't even have any NPCs. So <laughs> there were story missions, but you did them all with other players. And the only way story content was delivered to you was by like notes or audio diaries and things like that. Environmental storytelling. So could you imagine a Fallout 76 and uh, that has the multiplayer function that it has? But that also has like a, a typical Fallout campaign. I can because it kind of exists now in the sense of like they did an expansion. I think it's come out. It was called like Fallout 76 Wastelanders or something. And they were like, actually, you know what? NPCs are kind of a good idea to have in a video game. <laughs> uh, so I guess that kind of exists now. And I can also see conversely uh, taking a game like Fallout 4 and just being like, all right, it's multiplayer now. Like that would have been easy too. So like. Do I think you could take an Assassin's Creed game like Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, for instance, and drop other players in it and you do uh, you do missions together? Yeah, I think you could. And it would be OK. Yeah, I, I, I feel like for as as much as we kind of hear live service and we hear this article and we're like, well, guys, Assassin's Creed is gone forever. Yeah. And like, you know, and, and I mean, we've kind of already been there, but like a lot of people, I feel like. Yeah. For a lot of people, this is the last straw, apparently. Yeah. Like as if the past <laughs> events have not been, I guess. I mean, there are a lot of people playing Valhalla every single day, doing daily quests and completing weekly challenges. Um, a lot of them are my fellow moderators. I'm sorry if you're listening. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. <laughs> I don't know why you do this. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop playing. It's done. You've played everything. <laughs> they will sit there and assassinate the the fucking the dummy on the base 50 times to get a I don't know, a sword or something. I don't get it. You know, I could, you know, Destiny Destiny uh, is probably not a bad example of, of some of the trajectory that this could go to. Right. I mean, that's the thing. Destiny is a live service that by some miracle has actually seemingly succeeded. I know a lot of people who really like it. I'm not enough a shooter guy to get into it, but, you know, it's proof that there are live services that aren't Marvel's Avengers, you know? Yeah. And they're like, I mean, I, I played the Destiny one very early on, none of the expansions, but like there were cutscenes and stuff like there was. There was a skeleton of a story, you know, I've and I, I've heard that, you know, the other Destiny expansions in, in games do more of that. All I'm saying is, like, these last few games have very much felt like single player MMOs with the way that they present and manage things. So it makes sense that now we're going to get actual MMO, more or less. Like, I feel like a lot of people are hearing live service using that article and while not directly confirmed, you know, we can we, we can start to formulate what that is going to mean. But for for as like confident as we all are in terms of like, that's going to suck. Assassin's Creed over. Canceled. Dignity gone. I I I got to say, though, I at least feel like there is a level of like, what are they going to do? Because they're merging <laughs> two studios and 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 think, I mean, think about how huge Valhalla is as a game. Like, yeah. Obviously, that's not made just by one studio alone. They have a lot of 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 of, sub, of supplemental help from other studios, but to to utilize two studios on this on this one project, I mean, it's going to be a huge game no matter what. But yeah. that's really that's pro it's probably going to have more manpower behind it, and I might be wrong about this than you know your typical 
Fallout 76 or Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, you're actually completely right about that. Bethesda games employ shockingly few people in comparison to the rest of the industry. Well, there you go. So, like, I feel like that alone is is it will make it like a bigger experience than than those games. And so I just I I I don't want to say like I'm curious, but <laughs> I, I can't say that I am so beyond confident like what this is going to look like because yeah. it's it also considered like Elder Scrolls Online is not replacing Skyrim. It's 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 a, another game. If this is replacing Assassin's Creed uh, in in terms of like the Assassin's Creed as we know it, that it, it's it's gotta like be some kind of unique hybrid to to yeah. those other games I, I talked about. You know, it would hopefully still be kind of Assassin's Creed in some way. I. Yeah, I, and let me just say for the record, I wasn't expecting you to be the relatively optimistic one in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to point out just like, I think this is a worthwhile observation. If we imagine an alternate scenario in which Jason Scryer had not used the word live service, but had retained many other details outside of the, you know, abusive workplace stuff. I think people would actually be kind of excited for this because what's one thing we've been asking for for years and years and years? It's for them to have a plan for multiple <laughs> games that does not get immediately trashed because they give the franchise to another studio the following year and they want to do something completely different. We've been asking for that forever. They know that too, and that's why they put that front and center in their press release. We would be really excited that... There is an executive producer for the Assassin's Creed yes. franchise now. There yes. is someone overseeing the entire property, and they will have a long-term plan with storytelling goals of some sort that don't immediately crash and burn because they can't possibly organize a long-term story. That sounds good, and it, it's necessary when you want to be a property that has a live action Netflix series and everything else that they want to have. Like there's a reason the transmedia hasn't been hitting hard. It's because there's no story overarching to kind of hook us in and make us want to explore those different settings and those different media, you know, they could actually create that with this, but uh, then we have to consider the fact that it's a live service and the baggage that comes with that term, and suddenly it's not so exciting of a prospect anymore. That alone just undercuts yeah. it so significantly. I, I mean, I I completely agree with you because I actually had like the only note that I wrote for the show what or, or for this episode was that pretty much like cut out of the article where Ubisoft is talking about how like you know instead of passing the torch to, uh, to you know between studios every time we, we we wanted to have a more cohesive approach to the development and like. If you had told me that in 2014, I'd be like, Assassin's Creed is back, baby. It's here yeah. to stay, you know? And it's so it's so unfortunate that, like, this is the form that that is taking. Like, yeah. ju just, ju just as you said, the whole live service prospect of that is awful. If they had just said, like, yeah, if you just take, if you just took out live service from all of that, there is a lot of exciting possibilities. Also, something I wanted to mention, it's funny when you look at the Ubisoft article because... In terms of like what I get from it, it's very much like this is what's next for Assassin's Creed. Like, the, yeah. the, like this is like th this is what is coming after the Valhalla content is 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 done, and and like this, this this is what we're cooking up. So, does in in your opinion, does that deflate any possibility for another normal quote normal Assassin's Creed game to come out after? all this Valhalla content is done and before Unity, or sorry, before Infinity? Or do you think that we are getting Infinity next and that's it? Uh, somewhat it does. And the reason why is I feel like it would be a bad move for them to say, here's the future of Assassin's Creed. This is what we're doing next. And also uh, this coming summer, please be sure to buy the game that isn't good for all the reasons the next one will be. You know what I mean? I, I agree with you. It's just like at first I thought, okay, three years out, that's that that's a little while. And they have to like in and, and, and given all this talk that we've had about rumors and what the next game is gonna be and, and supposed leaks and whatnot. Yeah. I, I was thinking to myself, it's gonna be kind of strange if we don't get an Assassin's Creed game for that long. 
But now that Ubisoft has gotten ahead of it and 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 did that whole show about this is what's next for Assassin's Creed, I. I'm I'm thinking it's much less likely now, and I, I'm kind of where you're at with it, where I think Infinity is what we're getting next, and and so, but isn't that also interesting? Because that means at least two years without an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, um, definitely. We know that that third DLC rumor ended up being true, right? So they've confirmed that they're doing the Muspelheim DLC thing for Valhalla, and it, it, if that section of the rumor is true. We could also extrapolate that the rest of the rumor being that there was a full game in development that that team got repurposed to do a DLC instead, that could also be true. And then it's a question of that game probably doesn't exist anymore. Who says this third DLC will be the last one? I think it's very possible that in the years between Valhalla and Infinity that they come out with an expand alone side game sort of thing. Like I think, I think if not the one that Sophia was allegedly developing that like a $40 side game, not for the immediate future, so to speak, but for maybe a year or two from now that there's like a game running on basically the same bones as Valhalla, but maybe a different character, maybe a different setting ish, you know? So do you, do you think more of like a, like a, like a double a game then? Yeah. I still think that's possible. I just think we're now working with a time window that allows for that more. So like before we thought it was possible, we could be getting big swing and Dick next gen assassins creed as soon as 2022, but, but more likely 2023. Now we're talking about, we know what that game is and it's not coming until 2024 at the soonest. If that's the case, then I feel like the odds of a smaller thing in between there somewhere are much higher. But whatever it is, I feel like will not be a full $60 game release. It'll either be a double A game or an expand alone side game right. or just a fourth, fifth DLC. Fuck it. How much Europe is there? Eivor, Eivor <laughs> is conquering the goddamn planet Earth in this <laughs> DLC. <laughs> Avor's uniting all the kingdoms, dude. <laughs> every continent. <laughs> every Avor oh, Avor goes Avor's to gonna, every, Avor's gonna raid heaven. <laughs> she's gonna unite all of Earth's Earth's mightiest heroes, and she's gonna raid <laughs> heaven. I completely yeah. agree with you. I think I think that makes total sense at that kind of trajectory. And and uh, another thing that gives a little bit of legit l- legitimacy to Jason Schreier here is he was talking about how. He's been speaking to Ubisoft for weeks about this particular story. So, like, yeah. if you be obviously Ubisoft's like own admission of this, but like clearly, I feel like what he is saying about live service, perhaps it might be too narrow of a word for him to use. But he, I feel like he definitely knows more about this than anyone. So yeah. I, I trust him calling it a live service. I guess, and it, it just makes sense. I mean, we have to look at Ubisoft not just from the standpoint of what their creative decision making would be but what their business decision making would be and how do you i mean they're 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 always trying to up the game as far as the the monetization goes because we went from you know realizing that these microtransactions and things could work with probably unity and then ever since then it's just escalating and escalating and escalating this yeah. is the logical escalation also I think it's a smart move. Like, it seems like, wow, man, good job, Ubisoft. Like, taking three years off. Yeah, good for you. Not, I mean, not, not three years off, but three years until the next game. That is kind of a big deal. If yeah. if that is true, the next actual game. Um, I think a part of that strategy is to give people a break from Assassin's Creed just a tad and kind of let people miss it a little bit. They're still going to be playing Valhalla. Some people are going to be playing it every single day until Infinity comes out because they're monsters. But Because they're fucking psychopaths, frankly. Let's say 2024, you know, fall of 2024, Infinity launches. That, yeah. it, they've, now, they've now given people a t- time to breathe. And then it's back to like a, a new Infinity update every year or year and a half. Like that feels like Ubisoft to me. Like they're only ever going to give you a break if it means justifying you know more rapid releases and we have to consider the other side of this coin too which is that uh taking that time off that's a lot of time for 
those Assassin's Creed fans of us out there to forget about all the garbage <laughs> shit that's happening <laughs> behind the scenes at Ubisoft. You think in 2024 yeah, we're going to be like, oh yeah, Jonathan Dumont, that guy throws chairs at people. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> we want to segue into that or did you have more to say about <laughs> the game? <laughs> no, not really. Um it is kind of interesting how like Ubisoft is is uh, kind of uh, with with this pro- project or or like they're kind of like Nick Fury forming the like shitty Avengers <laughs> of <laughs> shitty people at Ubisoft. <laughs> I'm building a team. <laughs> We're putting a team together. Have you recently licked a woman on her face? You're in. <laughs> Like, sorry to make light of this, but I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's (laughs) let's let's jump into it. All right. I'm going to pull up this this tweet about how about you pull up that tweet? Ubisoft had investigated every allegation and took appropriate actions. Now, here's the thing. And and there's something that a lot of people are talking about here, which is that uh, that a lot of people are not talking about here, which is there is a line, um, a, a very strong line. And, and I want you know, I want you to hear me out on this because I'm not making excuses for anybody. I'm not justifying anything. Um, but if people are being shitty or hostile or abusive in the workplace in a way that is not necessarily illegal, To my knowledge, uh, the HR department is not necessarily under a legal requirement uh, to report or or fire that person. They would just be smart to because when you have someone that abusive, the odds that they eventually break the fucking law harassing somebody are substantial. But I think Ubisoft thinks that they're taking calculated risks with these people because they go, well... Mark Alexi Cote and Jonathan Dumont, they deliver us games on time that that aren't broken. And that's apparently a difficult thing to do. I'm, I'm sure it is. Uh, do I think those are the only people at Ubisoft or on the planet who could do it? No. I think there are probably a lot of nice people who can turn in a game on time. But that seems to be the decision that they've made about their workplace, which is that they're going to put up with that kind of hostility and abusive behavior because it gets them results or so they believe. And you can tell the kind of consequences that's already having by the fact that, you know, Jason Schreier is reading messages on their message boards, people being like, it's fucked up that we still work for this guy. You know, like this dude throws chairs at people like that's Jonathan Dumont is definitely, uh, one of the worst, uh, offenders, uh, one of the biggest offenders at, at Ubisoft Quebec, uh, allegedly. He, according to multiple sources, he uses his physical presence to intimidate people. He'll slam doors. He'll punch walls. He'll throw things, verbally abusing staff members, reducing some to tears, using offensive terms and homophobic slurs. He allegedly also targets women, telling them how to dress or when to smile. I don't want to play a game that dude made. <laughs> I just don't. You know? No. It's one thing that they that they've said over and over, like, oh, we've investigated and we've taken appropriate actions. All right. But we can see that these allegations exist. They're substantiated by multiple sources. And not only are they kept in the positions they were previously in, these guys are being promoted. This motherfucker's in charge. Mark Alexi Cote is now the executive producer of the Assassin's Creed franchise. And he stands accused of uh, essentially enabling and encouraging a lot of the predatory uh, harassment and behavior at Ubisoft that's been reported. Uh, he's not a good dude, for by all accounts, you know. And now he's the the top head motherfucker in charge. When Ubisoft is talking about how hey we're bringing in like third party people to investigate, like do you think that they are just getting these? Do you think that well one do you think that's bullshit or two? Do you think that they are getting the the you know the results and they're just not firing these people? Because like, I guess not to play devil's advocate, but I suppose, but I feel like if Jonathan Dumont is actually terrorizing these people, as and I'm not trying to say that he isn't, but yeah, let's say that's happening, and which you're you're saying like why wouldn't they just fire him? Right, like it seems like it's it, like what he can do is not worth 
the, the, yeah. the potential of that backfiring on them and more employees quitting and, and more of this getting out, you know? If I had to guess, I would say I think the purpose of that investigation, when you get a third party to investigate you, you know, it's not like you're calling the cops to show up and tell you if you've broken any laws, right? You are hiring someone to look into the, the you know the patterns of behavior, check out the evidence, talk to witnesses, talk to people who who have made these accusations, and determine, uh, you know, have there been fireable offenses? Is it defensible that this guy still work here? You know, is he putting the company at risk? Is he a liability? I think what they have determined is not necessarily that he is a good person or that he doesn't abuse his staff. I think what they've determined is that he's not a liability legally for that reason. Clearly whatever value that they believe this dude has outweighs what they perceive to be the risk of legal consequences or even the court of public opinion. Um, because I, I hate to say that this, I hate to say it, but you know, this is not exactly a major news story. Uh, we've got our circle yeah. of Assassin's Creed fans, yeah. um, Twitter constantly, and that has some effect that has some impact, I'm sure, but certainly Valhalla, which came out in the midst of the scandal, more or less had a director fired, still achieved the best sales possible. We're not exactly at a level, uh, to threaten them with the court of public opinion. Right. I mean, you, you know, I, yeah. And I, I mean, I was just thinking the same thing as to like, obviously this shit is just like secondhand to us because we've seen it in our circles and we know about it so heavily. But the, the, yeah. but, but the kid that's walking in the game shop to buy the new Assassin's yeah. Creed game has, knows nothing about this. And not every gamer reads games journalism. So any articles that do get written about it, uh, and some, some people, like, yeah, like I, 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 I hate, like it, it, the sad truth about it is no matter how much you or I or, or, or you know, Dylan and, and, and other people who are speaking out against this talk about it. It's like until it is actually affecting numbers, because it clearly isn't, they're not going to care. And so I suppose that is really the answer to why I keep Dumont around, because perhaps he is a bit of a risk, but compared to h how the games are still selling and how Ubisoft as a company is still profiting, it is less risky to get rid of him or sorry it's less risky to not get rid of him I you know what i would love to see i would love to see the entire mentors guild just step away like i would love to see them all privately and personally agree with each other to just step down like remove themselves from the program and see what ubisoft does about losing its entire like fan the the, the group of people that they go to for fan feedback if they all just disappeared i mean they are the honestly they are the highest up in terms of fans so that that would probably be that that would be noticed by someone at Ubisoft. Yeah, the, the there would be the community developers at least would have some explaining to do about that, and there would be some accountability. I would hope, but and and yeah, and if and if they were especially public about their decision, it's just so obvious that like stepping outside of any one individual, right? Regardless of whether or not Jonathan Dumont is a terrible abusive asshole, it is clear. Like the one thing no one can argue against, the one thing no one can deny is that the workplace culture at Ubisoft is a nightmare. It just looks, I mean, with the number of people accused, the number of problems reported, the the level of inaction we've seen from the higher level executive teams and, and the GMO family, obviously things are fucked up. And there has to come a point where there's a reckoning for that. I. It has been a good thing to see over the last few years, sort of the 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 stand against crunch. I mean, I, I heard uh, it's rumored that, you know, we found out recently that, like, apparently the expected release date for Grand Theft Auto six is, you know, 2025. That's a long time from now, a long time from when the last game came out. But uh, partially the purpose of that development time is to not ruin your employees' lives, apparently. Yeah. Uh, to not crunch them into oblivion, to put out a game where the horse balls shrink realistically. That's a good thing. I will wait. I'm a patient gamer. You can give me Assassin's Creed in 2027 for all I care, uh, as long as uh, no women were harassed on the <laughs> development of this game in the credits. That's going to be on the, on the cover. 
No, no women were hurt in the making of this video game. <laughs> no women were told to smile in the creation of this video game. Uh, I'll take it. All women, all women were frowning while making this game. Free the frown. Hashtag free the frown. <laughs> free the frown. Hashtag free the frown. Hold Ubisoft to frownable. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever said. I, I, I do. I really do wonder what Ubisoft as a company looks like by the time this game comes out. You know, like if things are any better. Or worse somehow. It's got to get better, right? We can always trust and take to heart the fact that, uh, yeah, so they've investigated every allegation and taken appropriate actions. Good for them. I can't believe that a company would publicly be like, hey, we're investigating these things and just not uh, like, (laughs) I don't know, just not respond accordingly to their investigations. It's like it's so transparent that you are just bullshitting. It's just, it's like, it's, it's, they know what they can get away with. And that's the thing. Like we remember that Kotaku interview where they're trying to talk about Avor and Valhalla. And like, you know, I think it was Steven Tot- Totilo, Totilo, Totilo. I don't know what the fuck his name is pronounced. He's like, Hey, why are the, why is, why are we only seeing male Avor, uh, in the marketing for this game? And then the PR woman for Ubisoft was like, you can shut the fuck up now, please. You can stop talking. <laughs> this is probably the same spokeswoman that was like, uh, anyway, I'm sure back to AC infinity. Yeah. But I guess to bring it back around AC infinity, there's, I, there, there's one thing I've said all along, which is that Assassin's Creed always changes, you know, it never stays the same for very long. We're not getting these RPG games for very long because after three of them, we're getting live service Assassin's Creed. So it has changed. It will evolve uh, just in a way we probably don't like still. I did want to ask you, uh, I guess, more about like just uh, not so much about the Ubisoft stuff, but like what this game is going to be. Do you believe that it is going to like the first, I guess, year of infinite I- infinity content, I guess you could say, or do you think that it's going to be China? Yes. As we've been. OK, so you think that 100%. AC and- so it's it's got to have both. It's got to have single pl- and multiplayer. It's got. I, I feel like it's got to have both. Yeah, I I think there will be a single player story. I know that like worst fears, as far as some people have expressed on Twitter, like oh it's going to be Destiny. Like no, there will be I think a single player story, but it might be weighed down by a bunch of extra multiplayer garbage. Hey, but we're actually going to finally get what you've always wanted, which is multiple settings in a single Assassin's Creed game. I know. I know. (laughs) Think about that. That's the other thing they said in like, it's in the leak. It's in the release. Like we're, there are going to be multiple settings technically in this game. Cool. Because there's probably more of an opportunity than ever before to explore one story or character across multiple settings. You know, like there's a lot of potential and opportunity there. It could be good. It could, it could be good. The, the, the Why helix, does it have to be shit instead of good? <laughs> <laughs> the helix riffs are finally like being utilized in, in their fullest potential. Like, um, uh, uh, and I just I feel bad about even having any modicum of optimism at this point. Like, I don't want to think it's gonna it could be good because I mean I'm definitely not gonna play it. That's for certain. But, like, <laughs> I'm not I, buying I, it. I'm not no, playing no, no, it. No, no, no. Um. We can't even trust the marketing. We were so excited for Valhalla until we weren't. We really were. It's also so upsetting that they choose they choose to do this now with like like why couldn't fucking Darby be the executive producer? Oh, Darby wants nothing to do with this. Well, Darby's yeah, like, I fuck that shit. I I'm sure his leaving had something to do oh, yeah. with perhaps the impending knowledge that Montreal and Quebec were going to be skin grafted onto each other and it was going to be a live service with probably less emphasis on story. Like I'm sure those things are related in some way. And can we also just for a moment acknowledge how strange it is that Quebec is essentially in charge. Like if, if, if I heard that Montreal and Quebec were merging, I never would have thought that meant that Quebec was going to run Montreal, but that's essentially what's happening. Like, you got Clint Hawking on this game, who actually seems like a good dude. I don't think there are any allegations against Clint Hawking, and he's been the steward of the Watch Dogs franchise to some extent, or he's he was at least the creative director on Watch Dogs Legion, and people like Clint Hawking. Why is he 
playing kind of second fiddle to Dumont and Cote. Like Clint Hawking is well is sharing leadership with Jonathan Dumont as a creative director. So he's not Oh, he's quite not second fiddle. fiddle. Okay. But it is true that Mark Alexi is the is the executive director. Uh so or well not executive director, the the executive producer of the franchise. So in that way, still Quebec is kind of running the show. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure they have reasons for their decisions that we could never even know, but boy, I'm just, I'm not thrilled. It's also kind of interesting to think that how this is going to affect future Ubisoft games generally with, with, with like, cause the merging yeah. of these studios is not just an Assassin's oh. Creed thing. And remember, we've been getting the potential title slash code name wrong. This is actually going to be Assassin's Creed Infinity, a Ubisoft original. Wait, are you serious? Are you fucking with me? You, do, you don't know? You don't know about this? Every single Ubisoft game now is branded oh, as a Ubisoft original. Oh, oh God. Yeah. I, Far Cry 6, a Ubisoft original. The Division I, Heartlands, a Ubisoft original. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I think I saw something about that, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. I don't say yikes very often, but that's worthy of it. I mean, Ubisoft as a company as a whole seems to be wanting to exploit the free to play they they want their own warzone fortnite competitor they want it so bad they did it with hyperscape i think it's called they're going to do a free to play division game and probably really? assassin's creed infinity is going to be cheap if not free to play that's to, to some extent or you know what they'll do they'll do it like halo infinity or halo infinite free multiplayer pay for the single player that's what it's gonna fucking be dude that's what they're gonna do those bastards! I didn't. I didn't know Halo Infinite was doing that. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, not cool, but free multiplayer. Sixty dollars if you want ten hours of Master Chief grumbling into his fucking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like uh, Halo multiplayer is is has ever been microtransaction friendly. So how are they going to profit off the multiplayer? Oh, they'll find a way. <laughs> they'll find a way. Yeah, you know, okay, I guess last thing I'll say about Infin In Infinity, a uh, uh, Ubisoft original, is that <laughs> I have always loved multiplayer in Assassin's Creed, even, like, like the more shitty, recent, like, technically multiplayer shit, like, w with the Yom's Viking garbage, or whatever, I don't know how you say the word, whatever. Yom's Viking. Like, that shit is, <laughs> is rid ridiculous, but... So a Ugh. game that like provides this kind of like next gen promise, like multiple settings and all that shit, with a with a with with multiplayer function and still single player, like that doesn't deter me immediately. But having played Valhalla, I know what that's gonna mean. So that is what deters me about it. It sucks because I'm not excuse me, I'm not turned off from the concept immediately. It's just. Knowing where, where where the games are at this very moment, that is what turns me off from it, and it yeah. sucks because this this could have been like a a a, a a a a slam dunk in terms of what what we look for. They try to please everyone; they end up pleasing nobody. They're they're trying to even in this PR release to say the things that will appeal to us, to the gamers, to the, the gamers. gamers. They want the gamers happy, but we're not happy. We're sad. We're gonna cry about it. And I mean, we've 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 got the animated stuff in, in the live action stuff coming to Netflix. Uh, it, it's just uh, Assassin's Creed is gonna be trying to be at the very least bigger than we've ever seen it before. Uh, so it's nice that I'm getting off of this train now. That was our our really our first reaction to the Infinity news. It's like, damn, we were ahead of the curve getting out of this whole fucking Assassin's Creed fandom thing, and you know. We're, we're getting to take on the role now of passive observer <laughs> and we can commentate yeah. on these things as we see fit, but we are not necessarily coming at it from the perspective of someone who is going to be lining up to buy this product or ever playing it or ever reviewing it and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Like, don't expect just because we did this, we're going to come back and talk about it <laughs> again later. We hope, we hope you'll join us. We, we hope you'll join us for this incredible journey. And we're excited to share more on what's coming for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Assassin's Creed Infinity at a later date. Well, have fun with that, Ubisoft. Have fun with that, guys. We hope you will come with us on this journey of not 
playing or talking about this anymore. <laughs> Please. I hope Jonathan Dumont um, has a bad salmon one day and uh, can't make it to work and they fire him. <laughs> bad salmon? Hey, it's a risk in Canada. Does Jonathan Dumont have a salmon allergy? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know about. <laughs> Don't bring salmon around that guy. He will throw a chair at a wall. <laughs> to add to our list of theoretically unverifiable claims about Jonathan Dumont, we should just start making up rumors about him, like that he has a, <laughs> he, he's like lactose intolerant. <laughs> he hates ankle socks. <laughs> What a piece of work this guy is. <laughs> Probably time to wrap this up. It's been fun talking about this garbage. Tim and I are still in the process of figuring out what we want to do next as far as podcasting goes. There there will be something eventually, I'm pretty sure. We're still figuring it out. We just, I, I think when this news came out, we saw an opportunity to maybe end things on a, on a less... Abrupt note. Abrupt, dour note. Uh, a, a proper goodbye, as it were, is basically what this episode is. Also, I would be lying if I said I didn't vastly prefer ending on episode thirty-five instead of thirty-four from a, a you know an, a, a number standpoint. You know what I mean? Like, just a nicer number, right? Tell me I'm right. Tell me it's a good number. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a good right. number. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Hey, you know, hey, I mean, the response to this episode will show us if people are still interested in hearing us because it's been a minute since Odyssey. It's been a while. Yeah. So um, I let us know. I, I was looking. I found like a Reddit post I made about our fall on the chain episode. And it's, it's like a year old. Like, I, I just like, yeah, I can't fucking believe that. Like a, a year yeah. ago, I fucking was like, hey, guys, we're talking about the fall on the chain this week. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> How innocent we were. Then, and and I also actually wanted to throw out there when we talked about this situation. It's like I remember I remember where I was when the news broke about um, disgraced former director Ashraf Ismail because we were how many episodes of the podcast by that point it had to be like five or six, I yeah. want to say, and we took a break because suddenly there was this onslaught of. I mean, that was sort of the the watershed moment. That was when the, the sort of dam broke. And then, you know, there were just there were ranges of allegations from from just hostile workplace behavior to out and out sexual assault at Ubisoft. And it it definitely has cast a shadow over um, the time we spent making this podcast. It was something we were thinking about pretty much the entire time. So I'm glad we sort of allowed ourselves to talk about it a little bit more directly because we spent a lot of episodes and a lot of time feeling like we wanted to make a fun, lighthearted comedy show and not have it be that dark. But it at a certain point needs to be said, and I think that point is, well, first it was when we found out that nothing had been done, uh, according to reports. And now it's that we find out that a lot of those people are being promoted and kept around and they're they're there to make Assassin's Creed a live service. So if if that first report wasn't the final nail in the hook blade coffin, we're going to let this be the final nail in the hook blade coffin. Uh, we will continue to be a dead service, but <laughs> we do want to thank you all for listening because it has been really fun and seeing some of the comments and tweets we've gotten after we canceled the show uh, really, at least for me, made me feel like we weren't completely wasting our time with this. So, yeah, I still feel like I wasted my time, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I said completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> I'm just joshing. Um, <laughs> It is. It it is. Really, yeah, I mean, reading the comments on on our Odyssey episode were, were, were nice, and I yeah. hope people have the same kind of sentiment to now this this I guess more more uh, expected goodbye. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, I know a lot of you guys said that you 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 listen to whatever we do next. Um, for those of you who perhaps have not vocalized that, just let us know. Uh, if you'd be interested in more podcast content that is not Assassin's Creed, <laughs> yeah, we're we're 
we're trying to figure out some things, you know, we would love to do a show about like more pop culture stuff, but there's the question of, is that, is that hook blade just changing its direction or is that a completely new show on a new channel? Uh, you know, things like that. We are still kind of piecing together. So any ideas you have for things that you want to see us talk about? Cause really, I mean, the, the first reason we do this is cause it's fun and we like it and it's a good, it's a good hobby, but, uh, it would be a waste of time if there was nobody listening. So <laughs> that's accurate. What you got, it does matter to us quite a bit. Um, what you guys feel like you'd want to hear us talk about, if not Assassin's Creed. Right. So, but, but more broadly, whether you comment or you answer any of our questions, just that if you've listened to this episode, any episode, um, if you've listened to the show at all, we want to sincerely thank you um, for 100%. taking the time to listen to our dumb asses say stupid shit about this terrible, terrible video game franchise. Um, thank you, Wolfie. Thank you, Nick Collins. Our uh, Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Finn. Thank you, Treviso. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> um, thank you, Casaix, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Obese Ninja. Thank you, thank you, Messy Pizzas. Uh, thank you, Arshok. Uh, shout out to Altair Stealth. <laughs> thank you, uh, Blue from OSP. Uh, thank Henry, you to... thanks, Henry. Sakari <laughs> S- S- or Sakari. S- 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 uh, uh, they comment a lot. Thank you, Sif. Sif, you're the you're our favorite. Um, we thank you for Sif. purchasing that that three minutes. Really appreciate that. Yeah, that was a big that was a big help. Thank you, Locust with a Z. Mr. Scon, thanks. <laughs> thank you, Darby, for the one episode you listened to. And <laughs> us about. Thank you for the one episode you, inter- you you let us interview you on. <laughs> thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Nick Barish. Thank you, Dustin Lafferty. Thank you, Ellie Vengala. Thank you, uh, Nerdy Archer. Thank you, Faraz. Thank you, Jacers. How could I forget Jacers? Well, well, best for last. <laughs> God, now if we leave, now if we leave anybody out. <laughs> They're going to be so pissed. I know, literally. We got to we got to I'm going to cross our Ts and dot our Is on this motherfucker now. If you were not named, just know that that means that uh we love you very much. Thanks JDE. Thank you the Shanic Power. Thank you Leo K. Thank you Ghost Leader. Maybe we can get Leo K on our ne- maybe we can get Leo K on our next podcast. We didn't get we didn't get to get him on Hookblade. Thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> they, just all right. I think we've we've exhausted the thank yous. Yeah, but not yeah, not all, not everyone that comments deserves us to say their name. But thank you to all of our six hundred and thirty three subscribers as of now, and uh, stick around because hopefully you'll be hearing about our next project sooner rather than later. I have been the hook. I've been the blade. And thanks for listening. Goodbye.